you, folks. So, hello, JS Congress. How, how are we doing? I'm Shabhik Shah, and I'd like to talk to you about open web, open source, and open communities. Before that, who am I, and why am I here talking to you about this? So I graduated this year, and I'm working as a software engineer at Microsoft right now. Before that, I participated in the Outreach program with Mozilla. So for those who don't know what Outreachy is, it is like Google Summer of Code for underrepresented folks. It tries to get more and more underrepresented folks involved in open source. So I've been involved with open source for around one and a half, two years now. And I know that's not a lot of time, but I still wanted to share whatever I have learned along the journey till now with all of you today. So who is this talk for? This talk is basically my story about how and why I got into open source and all the good parts and the bad, bad parts. So this talk is for people who want to participate in open source in some capacity as a maintainer, as a collaborator, as a contributor, and so on. So let's begin by talking about the relationship between JavaScript and open source. So open source is pretty much the backbone of the JavaScript ecosystem as we know it today. And what enables it is the fact that the web is an open platform to develop for. It's not controlled by a particular corporation which decides its direction. It's up to us, the community, to push it forward in whatever direction we want to. So majority of the tooling right now, unsurprisingly, is open source. And all companies, big or small, depend on it to run their businesses every single day. And that's huge. So before we get to my story, I would like to ask you all a couple of questions. So do you contribute to open source? Like, can I have a show of hands? OK. So next question, do you want to contribute to open source? Can I have a show of hands for that? So please look around you. Can you see the difference? The gap is something that we need to fix. Till last year, I was also one of those people who wanted to contribute to open source, but I could not find a way. So let's get back to how all of it started. So what's my story? Last year in September, I published a blog post on Medium titled, A Beginner's Very Bumpy Journey into the World of Open Source. And that image is actually a very visual representation of how I felt about open source and how much I ran away from it. So I started off trying to like, explain how hard it was for me as a newbie to contribute and get into open source. I, I was almost trying to do that for two years. And two years is a pretty long time. It was hard. So one interaction I had in particular in one of the projects I was trying to contribute to still sticks out with me till today. So I, I just wanted more context on a bug I was trying to fix, and I asked for help. And the reply I got was this, and I quote, if you can't figure out how to make the change, you're not qualified to make the change. And this left me completely baffled. I, I did not understand what to make out of it. Am I not good enough? Like, I just had so many questions. Like, am I not good enough? Is this, is this something I can't do? Do I not, like, ask for help? What do I do? So it took me a few months to actually get out of that phase and, you know, start contributing again. So after that, I kept at it, and I still tried to find projects to contribute to. And it so happened that I stumbled upon a Mozilla project with an issue with the comment that said, I can mentor this. And this is something that felt to me at that time was like a light at the end of the tunnel. It was exactly what I was looking for. So if I get stuck, there's someone who will help me out. So I kind of latched on to this project ever since. And I worked on fixing a couple of bugs and developing features and so on and so forth for almost a year. So why do I care about this so much? And why am I here talking to you about it today? So after I published this blog post, the response I got was amazing. Like It completely left me surprised. I, I, I realized that I was not the only person who was going through this, because there were so many people who were reaching out to me from all parts of the world telling me that they experienced this too. I was not alone. So this, these are actually some of the emails that I got from people. This says that I'm too scared to ask questions because of the negative comments which people give. 
The second one says that I need some help regarding open source contribution. I read your articles on Medium and tried to solve some issues for the, for the first time, but failed to do so. I don't know how to solve them. And my inbox and my Twitter DMs are fill, full of questions like these. There are people out there who want to help us, who want to help us push the web forward. They just don't know how to do it because they, they are looking for help, they're looking for some direction, but they can't get it. So to everyone who wants to contribute to open source, I, I say to you this, you're not alone. There are so many people out there who have the same struggles as you do, they face the same issues as you do. It is hard to understand that large code base, it doesn't make sense, the tests always don't pass, they fail, the build isn't always green, and it's okay. Thank you. So why should we care about this as a community? So JavaScript is the first language a lot of people learn. And that's because there are just so many resources out there to learn it on the web. So if for me personally, and I know there are a lot of com conflicting opinions about this, when I'm trying to learn a language, it matters the kind of community it has around it. And I'm not, I know I'm not the only one who looks into that before trying to pick up a language. It is also important to, to do this so that we can sustain our vision of an open and free web. Open source enables that vision. Open source supports that vision. The, the explosion in the tools and frameworks is a testament to that. To do that, we need all the help we can get. We need to leverage the help of everyone who's willing to help us. So how can we do it? Let's talk about the how now. How can we bridge this gap between people trying to contribute to open source but failing to do so or not knowing how? It's complicated, but I believe that optimizing for the newbie experience in, for your open source project can work out well in the long run. So how do we do this? By lowering barriers of entry. Right now, the barriers of entry into open source are really, really high. Not just for junior devs, even people who have some experience find it difficult and they feel excluded, and this needs to be fixed. So actively trying to lower barriers of entry into open source mutually benefits all of us. So how can we do that? All kinds of contributions should be appreciated, not just code. I know, like in tech, code is the utmost thing that's important, but there are other things that enable an open source project to be successful. For example, writing documentation, evangelizing through blog posts and talks. All of that is equally important and it should be recognized and if possible, rewarded. A very simple way to do that is a, a, through a project called All Contributors. Its aim is basically to recognize all sorts of contributions in a project's readme, and these little things matter, trust me. Another way to do this is labeling beginner issues. Being completely new to a code base, it's very difficult to just read an issue description and figure out what needs to be done or how much effort it is going to take. So this is a great way to point newbies into the right direction and tell them, okay, you can start from here. So this is an, a lot of projects, what they do is they basically label just the good issue, good first bugs, that's just the beginner issues, and once a contributor is comfortable doing that, they don't really know where to go from there. So this is an example from Webpack. So what they do is they have like four levels of difficulty, from D0 to D3, and they, they rate it by the level of difficulty that's required, the level of contribution that's required to fix that issue. So a contributor has a set path that once I'm done with D0, I'm comfortable doing that, I can move on to D1 and so on and so forth. So having and enforcing a code of conduct is another way to lower barriers of entry. So everyone who wants to participate in, a commu in our community should be able to do so irrespective of everything else. So for underrepresented folks, uh, having a COC is the deciding factor sometimes about being able to contribute to a project or backing away from it. So having a COC that is not enforced is actually worse than not having one at all because it gives a false impression of a sa safe space that doesn't really exist. So if you have a COC, which you should, please enforce it without exceptions. Another way to do it is not to tolerating bad behavior from community members. The RTFM attitude, which is read the freaking manual, should be actively discouraged and called out. 
it's okay to not want to help someone for whatever reasons but it's not okay to belittle them for asking for help because a lot of times asking for help takes a lot of courage so this is just an example of bad behavior a person tried to make a project better by using gender neutral pronouns and they just sent in a pr but instead of just accepting the pr which which would have been way easier to do everyone started bashing it and trashing the pr saying this is not important this is not okay another way is treating people with empathy a little empathy can do wonders we in tech we have a tendency to forget where we came from we forget that that like we were there at some point as well we didn't know all the things that we know today we started from somewhere but and we we got here with help like people were willing to help us and that's how we got here if you can remember that once in a while while dealing with new contributors it can help them a lot a little push for a new contributor can take them a very long way so why should we do this why why is all of this important why why is this effort needed for our community right now at this stage so optimizing for new con contributor experience in your project can pay off in the long run we we need all the help that we can get and we need to find a way to leverage it so uh, it's hard and time consuming in the beginning i i agree but in the long run people you guide and train can become potential maintainers or collaborators and can ultimately reduce your workload as well so it's a win win situation for both parties i'd like to leave you all with this according to me and i i truly believe in this all of software especially open source is much more about people than it is about code and this quote by sagebot is one of my all time favorites and i'd like to end with this code is never the challenge well rested comfortable people who feel emotionally safe have solved every problem i've put in front of them thank you so much for your time you're a wonderful audience